Hi everybody, welcome to a new video. Today we're gonna to talk about Roger Glover, bass player of Deep Purple. This video was made because of your request for it and it was made possible by your comments, by your help. So thank you very much for helping out. We're gonna do some more of this probably on Instagram, so make sure you follow me. Founded in 1968 as a psychedelic and progressive rock band, Deep Purple shifted to a heavier sound with their 1970 album Deep Purple in Rock and today they are considered to be among the pioneers of heavy metal and modern hard rock. Bassist Roger Glover was dismissed in 1973, a move the keyboard player John Lord described as the biggest shame in rock and roll, and rejoined the band for the 1984 reunion. Compared to the other big players of the era, Glover has a very meat and potatoes approach to the instrument. After all, Deep Purple are arguably the inventors of the hard rock genre and the rocky sound of the bass is one important element to it. Often playing unison with a guitar or keyboard, but breaking down the dynamics with a good old pedal tone under the verses, Glover is also an excellent writer, knowing when to play and when to get out of the way, alternating busy parts to a simple but effective root note pattern. Glover got his punchy tone by playing with the pick most of the time, and though he experimented with several basses during his career, he's best known for using a Fender Precision and a Rickenbacker, as classic as it gets when talking hard rock. He locked in with the drums most of the time, as any good bass player should, and when he came out, he never used fancy scales or too complex runs, but his feels are very tasty and melodic, and some of them are also pretty damn hard to play. If you listen to Highway Star, for example, it's the best guitar holding up the song, alternating simple parts like the verse and the beginning of the solo, and very elaborate runs like the chorus. And even though most Deep Purple fans seem to think that Glenn Hughes is arguably a better player, they also agree on the fact that Roger Glover was the best fit for Purple. So let's take a look at the most defining traits of one of the godfathers of a hard rock bass. Number one, it's a matter of fifths. When keeping a steady root pattern, one of Glover's favorite moves is hitting on the fifth, especially during instrumental parts. It provides a little melodic variation and can be used both under minor or major chords without getting in the way of the lead instrument. Pictures of Home is the best example, where the whole song is built over a root and fifth riff. Number 2. Minor Pentatonic The pentatonic scale is the sound of rock, and of course Deep Purple's music is packed with pentatonic runs. The bass guitar especially seems to be using nothing else, and pretty much every lick and every bass line is based around a minor pentatonic scale. The thing about the minor pentatonic is that it's a minor scale that doesn't sound too minor compared to Phrygian or Aeolian, so it's perfect for a hard rock context, where the idea is to sound badass but not too dark. Number 3. Root and Flat 7th Another very common solution when it comes to simple supporting bass lines is alternating the root note and its lower flat 7th. Once again, a little melodic variation that doesn't get in the way. Number 4. The Glover Box Besides the minor pentatonic scale, there's one particular box that Glover seems to really like, a little variation that also includes the augmented fourth.
Number 5. Chromatic Scale Roger Glover makes also a large use of chromatic scales, especially used to connect different sections of the songs. Number 6. The solos. Deep Purple are known for their extended instrumental parts that most of the time involve keyboard or guitar solos. In a few occasions, also the bass takes the spotlight, and though it's pretty much just again pentatonic scales, Roger puts together some very tasty lead parts. Number 7. Octave Runs Another simple move that adds dynamic without changing the melodic structure of the riff. This is a very common solution that most bass players use, but when it's Roger Glover, it sounds really heavy like in the verse of Into the Fire. Number 8. Ascending Open String Riffs Another simple yet effective move, where the open string acts as a pedal tone, adding power to the part. There's many other bass lines worth checking, like the Dorian vibe of the main riff of the Mule or the walking bass in the chorus of Demon's Eye. Once again, simple solutions, well made. Nothing real fancy, but timing and sound are very innovative for its time. Deep Purple are still a very influential band, and many kids pick up a bass for the first time because of the catchy bass line of Black Knight or a pedal tone under the most famous guitar riff of all time. Remember that note I taught you the G? Play, but also keep it rocking good. Bum, bum, okay. So yeah, even if you might not be a technically advanced player, Roger Glover is definitely a bass player you need to know. Thank you very much for watching, please follow me on Instagram, don't forget to subscribe and leave us a like.